stirring the coffee with the giant chopsticks of truth using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, what is this? It is a Trader Joe's Five Country Blend made in a percolator. That seems to be working. Nice. Nice. I love this line from Grant Cardone. Got this from him in 2015. The number one reason why you fail at business is this. Nobody knows who you are. Wow. Not making enough money? People don't know you. People need to know you. They know, need to know your business. Oh my God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. <laughs> you know, it's weird watching people slowly kill themselves with alcohol or other drugs. It seems like they don't have that mechanism that says, okay, I've had enough. One of the reasons why I respect people who say that they can't drink, they just know. When you know, you know. Nevertheless, it's a trip and a tragedy at the same time. Having a front row seat at someone's life stage as they act out this tragedy called alcoholism. And you already know what the ending is going to be. It never ends well. And that being said, you need to intervene with your alcoholic loved one before it's too late. And most likely it probably already is too late. But don't hesitate because you're afraid you're going to offend them or disrupt the peace. There won't be any peace when you get the call from the police officer that they are in jail, they were killed in an accident or killed somebody with their car. And believe me, you eventually will get that call. I still have another couple decades of conference speaking and podcasts inside of me. Uh, for those of you that are new to me, I work with men who are in acute distress after loss, breakup, and divorce. Also with men who want to get out of a relationship, who want to leave her the smart way. Two children raised in the same shitty home with alcoholism, anger, violence. One grows up to be classy, successful, responsible, a gentleman. The other grows up to be an asshole, a shit talker, unliked by everyone. Everything they touch turns to shit, business and relationships. When separately asked why they turned out the way they did, they both reply, well, if you knew the kind of father that I had, Lesson A, you can use your shitty childhood as an excuse for your current state. Or B, you can use it as a springboard for success. Don't be A. No one cares about what your background or excuses are. There's no hope for the shitbag that chooses A behavior over and over and over. You just need to overcome the little skinny or chubby invisible boy that's inside of you and controlling every move you make. My weekly comment about dating sites, I used to say they are the returns department at Walmart, but I really think they are the clearance rack at the dollar store. Did you ever hear the phrase, you scared the Dickens out of me? Well, the word Dickens has nothing to do with Charles Dickens, contrary to popular thought. It was a Shakespearean euphemism for the devil or hell without saying devil or hell. What in the dickens are you doing? I can't remember what the dickens his name is. And you all thought it had something to do with Charles Dickens. You learn something new every day. You, sir, are already complete. You just want another complete person to share time with. If someone isn't complete, then there's a vacuum that sucks the life out of everything around them. These are the draining people, the energy vampires. You're tired after spending time with them. The good ones give you energy. The crazy ones draw your energy and suck it out of you. The good ones make you want to move, to eat better, to live better, laugh more, pursue your goals and dreams. Now, if you don't actively pursue them, then you end up either drained or always dealing with the other's drama or you waste your own time trying to fix them. And here goes that finger thing again. There will be no fixing of people. 
there will be no fixing. There will be no begging. There will be no pleading. There will be no trying to save the marriage, because you need to save the man. And there will be no fixing people. In all my years on this earth, one of the things that I've observed is that women can't be alone for long. You will be amazed at how fast your ex is planking another man. There's your strong, independent woman for you. I want a man. I don't need a man. I want a man. Yeah. Two days after you guys broke up. Short. The cold, hard truth is that you are not special and you never were. Wake the fuck up. You just took up space and now that you're gone, nature abhors that vacuum and draws another person in. Patterns don't lie. Wake the f What she did in the past with other men, she will do with you. Wake the fuck up. If she packed their shit up in a box and brought it to their house, guess what's going to happen with you when she breaks up with you? She's going to pack your shit in a box and bring it and leave it on your front doorstep. Wake the fuck up. Patterns don't lie. If she called the cops on the last bunch of boyfriends or a husband, she's going to do the same thing to you. Patterns never lie. Ever. Wake the fuck up. Ever. So, Mr. Farmer, remember this. That field was never yours. It was just your turn. You will never be her first, but you will be her next. Let me ask a question about your keys. Where do you put your keys when you walk in your home? Do you put them on a table? Do you have a row of hooks that you put your keys on? A kitchen counter, a bedroom, a bowl? Do you keep them in your pocket? What do you do with your keys? Put them on your desk, in a drawer? What do you do? I know when I come home, I have a row of hooks. And the row of hooks are motorcycle keys, truck keys, car keys, that kind of thing. I don't know, about 12 years ago, I misplaced my keys. I thought I lost them. I misplaced them. They were in the home somewhere. Man, I turned the home upside down. Upside down. It was, and it was almost traumatic because I had to go somewhere and those, and the keys that were also on that key ring were from the acting studio where I was teaching at the time. I used to teach acting and modeling. Did that for many, many years. And those keys were on my key ring. And I actually had to call the owner of the agency and she turned me on to a, a place a little hiding place where I could find the keys whatever and guess where I found them the next day on my bed how did my keys get on my bed like under a bunched like a bunched up blanket there were the keys how in the world did they get there because I came home the day before came in changed my clothes emptied my pockets and there were the keys on the bed so that was so I don't say traumatic, but it really worried me to the point where it, it, I actually remembered the day and the scenario of losing the keys to the point where I put a row of hooks inside like the vestibule area. As soon as I walk in the door, take no more than five steps and the keys go on the hook. Have I ever misplaced my keys after that? Never. What do you do with your keys? Here's a quick question for the president-to-be, Donald Trump, what will you do about Coach Red Pill, Gonzalo Lira, an American citizen? I want to know. And so do hundreds of thousands of other men want to know. What are you going to do about it? I am an effortless, intermittent fasting guy. 16 hours fasting, an eight hour window of eating, but I'm considering doing 18 hours of fasting and six hours of an eating window. What do you do? And does intermittent fasting work for you? On every level, government is very self-serving and evil. You know, we have sinkholes where I live in the area. One road gets a sinkhole and the road is closed for over a year. Another road gets a sinkhole and it's closed for a week. Why? Because you find out that a town councilman lives on that road and he snapped his fingers and the Department of Transportation was on it the next day. Government is very self-serving. Quick reminder that you are one person away from the one person that can change your life. Your most valuable asset in business and commerce is, guess what? Relationships. Wake the how much do you contribute to those relationships? 
the people that you know. You stay in touch with people. Make a mental inventory of those relationships today and what you can do to improve those relationships, not start drawing from them. Relationships are like a bank account. Do you hear me? Relationships are like a bank account. You deposit into it regularly. Then when you need something, you can withdraw. But guess what? Just like a, reg like a real bank account, you can't withdraw more than what you've deposited. But if you make depositing a regular thing and you build up the account or the relationship, when it comes time to make a withdrawal, the relationships have zero issues. Sure, they can help you. Sure, I have time for you. Invest in the relationships that you have. It is your most valuable asset, relationships. Christopher Morley in his writing, The Last Pipe, which was written in 1918, one of my favorite, absolutely one of my favorite essays. Breakfast must be spread in a chamber of Eastern exposure let there be hominy and cream and, if possible, brown sugar. There follow scrambled eggs, shirred to a lemon yellow with toast sliced in triangles, fresh unsalted butter, and scotch bitter marmalade. Scotch bitter marmalade. I don't know what that is. You know what that is? Let there be without fail a platter of hot bacon, curly, juicy, fried, to the debatable point where softness is overlaid with the faintest crepitation of crackle of crispiness. Oh, you crazy! You know, it's in, some people just say, yeah, I'd like some bacon, please. But he says, hot bacon, curly, juicy, fried to the debatable point where softness is overlaid with the faintest crepitation of crackle of crispiness. <laughs> Leave it to a writer to describe things. Leave it to a writer to say something in a hundred words, which can be said in two words. But I don't mind at all because it's Christopher Morley. If hot Virginia corn pone is handy, so much the better. And coffee, two-thirds hot milk, also with brown sugar. Oh my God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. <laughs> it must be permissible to call for a second serving of the scrambled eggs, or if this is beyond the budget... Let there be a round of judiciously grilled kidneys. I think I can, I think I can pass on the, the grilled kidneys. With mayhap a sprinkle of mushrooms grown in chalky soil. That is the kind of breakfast they used to serve in Eden before the fall of man and the invention of innkeepers. Christopher Borley, 1918. That's from the essay called The Last Pipe. In the future, after the United States of America is gone, its epitaph may say it was a culture that took everything that was perverted, wrong, and weird, and legislated, legalized, and promoted it. While there's always been perverts and wrongdoers and weirdos, there's never been a culture that promoted it and made it state-approved behavior and actually started building laws to protect it, promote it, and punish those that oppose it. Welcome to the United States of America. Bizarro world. Ever watch the Andy Griffith show? The reason Mayberry was so peaceful and quiet was because nobody was married. Here's an interesting observation. Andy, Aunt B, Barney, Floyd, Howard, Goober, Gomer, Sam, Ernest T. Bass, Helen, Thelma Lou, Clara, and of course Opie were all single. The only married person was Otis, and he stayed drunk. Pretty funny. So here's a question. Where are all the single, level-headed, conservative women at? Smiling, feminine, love girly things, nature-loving, not angry at the world, happy, healthy, attractive, love masculine men, respect God, open to great ideas, fun to be with. You actually have to work hard at making them angry and do something stupid because that anger is not just a millimeter below the surface. Where are those women today? Where are they? I can't seem to find one. So I want you to think hope for the future, not cope for the future. Show me plans for why you can, not excuses for why you can't. She's a good girl. She loves her mama. She loves Jesus and America, too. She's a good girl. Crazy about Elvis. Loves horses. And her boyfriend, too. 
Tom Petty, the song Free Falling from 1989. Do you have a business that you want to sell? Do you have a business idea but need capital, an investor, a partner, or management expertise? Hit me up. I can help. I'm not happy, she says. The unhappy wife or girlfriend is a thing. It's a phenomenon, and it's real. I've seen men jump through hoops trying to please this kind of woman, the unhappy woman, the unhappy wife, the unhappy girlfriend. It never works. You can't please her. You work too much, she says, yet she enjoys all the amenities that he provides with that job. I feel like you're ignoring me, she says. Then she proceeds to not let him touch her. You're not the man I married, she complains. Well, no shit, sister, because I'm growing and you're stagnant and just bitching that I got into shape, I work out, and I'm becoming the best version of myself. You seem so distant. You must be cheating. Do you have a girlfriend? She says, that's because I'm focused on creating a better life for us. I don't have time to cheat, even if I wanted to. The perpetually unhappy wife or girlfriend. Single kings identify this shit early on and run. Married kings, I have no idea what to tell you, except that you may have made a huge mistake years ago in marrying the wrong woman. But I know you think God can bless a union between you and a wrong woman, right? And you just want to hang in there because it's, it's the godly thing to do. It's like jumping off of a cliff and then halfway down, you realize you, you made a, a wrong move and now you're asking God to rescue you. Oh, you crazy! How's it go? Some people say what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Okay. I have a question for you. What makes you think God put that together? Just because you got horny one night and knocked up a chick and we're not in control of your beta self, you think that's blessed by God? You think you can take a shitty relationship that never should have happened and then ask God to bless it? Wishful thinking. Wake the fuck up. Save the man, not the marriage. You made a huge mistake, and if you want out after trying everything, then you need to silently plan and swiftly execute. It's affecting your physical health. It's affecting your mental health. You look older. It's wearing you down. She's not going to change, my brother. Listen to me, married king. She's not going to change. Throwing more money at it, more stuff at it, a bigger house, more vacations, you know, all the shit that you did, isn't helping, is it? Relocating didn't help. She just brought her miserable self from the north down the south. Well, we, we relocated and she still is complaining. You know how many times I heard that? Men do all kinds of stuff to try to build up a relationship and try to save it and make it better. It doesn't work with the unhappy woman. I don't give a fuck. I can't tell you how little fucks I possibly So listen up, my pack mule brother. It's not your job to make her happy. You don't owe a woman a better life. You don't owe a girlfriend a better life. That's the job of both of you. That's a lot of weight to carry on one set of shoulders. You quit alcohol. You quit weed. You lost weight. You got jacked. You improved yourself. You're stressed as hell. And that, my pack mule brother, is what will kill you. Maybe a new woman is the answer. Maybe no woman is the answer. I know one thing, that nagging banshee in the other room isn't the answer either. And you're not going to be a blessed martyr for hanging in there. You have one life. She either loves it with you, or she gets left behind. How do you write women so well? I think of a man, and I take away reason and accountability. My pack mule, brother. Another great quote from Christopher Morley, read every day something no one else is reading, think every day something no one else is thinking, do every day something no one else would be silly enough to do. It is bad for the mind to continually be part of unanimity. Break out. Break out. Where are you at right now? Where are you at? Break out of it. The surest sign of her having done that before is, be ready is when she says, I've never done that before. Oh, you crazy! <laughs>
In 2019, I wrote the bones and the outline of a book called Open to Marriage. After nearly two decades of being a single divorced guy, I just felt like I wanted to be married again. So since 2019, I look at women differently. I look at them like, would this woman make a good wife? I don't need a woman to be a good mother since I'm not looking to create babies anymore, but I am looking for a life companion. But I'm not going to hook up with just anyone. So I'm back on that path again, and I'm going to be finishing the book called Open to Marriage that I started. It actually is finished. I just actually need to edit it. And it's going to be a two- to three-day read. But imagine after nearly 20 years of being divorced, thinking... Well, some people say, well, you're going to jump back into the fire. No, I'm not. With the lessons that I've learned, that is not going to be the case. But even though I do love spending time by myself and I've got the solo life and table for one thing perfected, I, I want to be married. I like, I like the idea of having a partner. I like being alone, but I will build that alone time into the marriage. So... It's not a bad thing. Just make sure that the process is different than your first time or second time around. Divorced or separated or broken up, brother, let me tell you, women haven't changed. You need to change. I don't know why, but I always like it better when the 1950s comic author penned laughing as ha ha, H E H, ha ha, versus today's. Ha ha. As a 40s, 50s, and 60s comic book aficionado, you kind of notice these little differences in the comic eras. <laughs> is better than ha 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 ha. It seems more dastardly, right? When when you see a, like a character in a comic book like scheming something or celebrating after someone is killed or getting their comeuppance, they're like ha 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 ha. And that is spelled H E H H E H. Ha ha. The woman says, You never listen to me. You only hear what you want to hear. The man replies, You're right. I should buy another motorcycle. <laughs> and with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I can't tell you how little fucks I possibly wait. <laughs> Hi, my name is Erin. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a...